is James Sibloha, pastor in Shakaina Glory Assembly, POG in Livingstone. I just want to share part of my Christian journey. To begin with, I want to talk about my testimony and how I came to know the Lord. I was born in Karomo, one of the, um, uh, in Karomo, the capital city of, the first capital city of Zambia, in a village. My father was a bishop in the Church of Christ. So I grew up in the church, because from childhood my father would take me to church, and um, I just grew up in the church. You know, but that did not make me a Christian. Just like when someone is born maybe in a garage, it doesn't make him a car. So I just grew up that way. I was a religious man, I knew about God, but I'd never known him fully. And um, I just grew like that. I used to go to church, but at the same time I'd do whatever any other man would do. Until when he, I, I went to school, I qualified to go for a secondary school. And then I left for Namara Secondary School, which is one of the districts in, in Zambia. And um, I remember very well, it was during the uh, break time, uh, a certain lady by the name of Jens Limi, he came to us where we were standing, and she asked a question. Each one of us, she was, she was asking to find out whether we were born again. And when she came to me, I told her I was born again, and then um, she left me, she went to another man and asked him the same. The time she moved to another person, I heard the voice telling me to say, if you don't become a Christian today, you will never be a Christian for the rest of your life. And that scared me. So I called her back, I said, Jenny, come. And I told you that I'm a Christian, I told you that I'm born again. But um, I just feel there is something that is missing. I feel there is a vacuum. I feel there is something that you have, which I don't have. I want you to help me. By that time, I really wanted to be a Christian. Because I would see the difference between me and the so-called born again. Sometimes we'd go for film shows, sometimes we'd go for discos, but then they would go for script union, they would go for fellowship, and somewhere we are living totally two different lives and I knew something was missing in me. I knew I was lacking something which they had, but uh, I could not uh, help myself. But that day, I just felt I need help. And uh, we made arrangements. She couldn't talk because the period was so short. We made arrangements that we meet at 14 hours. I was eager that day. I just wanted to be a Christian. I just wanted to be born again. And I was uh, so, so, so excited. So he told me, let's meet at 14 hours, 14 hours. We went in, uh, in, into one of the laboratories and she began to explain to me what it means and how I could become a Christian. You know, I remember that day um, when she was talking to me about salvation, it was like she was reading my story. She knew everything that I was, uh, that I was doing and uh, by the end of her sharing, I became defenseless. I just said, Jane, I just want to, to, to receive this Jesus as my personal savior. You know, we prayed with her, and uh, from that very moment, my life was totally changed. And I went back home in my room. For the first time, I went on my knees. I prayed to God, and my life was totally changed. I felt the call of God just after I became a Christian. That was in 19... 84. I knew God has called me. Yeah, but I was scared to step out because I was able to see what the pastors were subjected to, the difficulties, the challenges they were facing at that time, and that scared me to step out. So I thought it would be better for me to go and do uh, some training and, and work. And thereafter, I respond to the call of God, of which I went that way. I was accepted in college. I went to do some, some, some training. Thereafter, I was employed. I started working. And um, during that time, 
it was not pleasant for me in the sense that I knew that I was called on full time and I knew I was dispressed. Every time I was moving or working, I would hear like someone telling me to say, you are not supposed to be here. I called you to manage people. And that process, it went the wrong way. I was feeling that way, you know, that scared me as well. And it was building up as I went on the ministry until I decided to say, okay, I think it's better I do two ways now. Let me do the pastoring and also I do, um, I continue to work. Therefore, I, I started a church, a pioneer the church. I started pastoring. At the same time, I would, I would work. Yeah, but to me, uh, it couldn't work well because I, was, I, I felt I was overstrained. After work, I have to run to go and uh, do the ministry work, you know, which was very tiring for me. Sometimes you find the work is demanding. I can't go to church. I can't attend you know, some meetings. Until somehow I got so convicted to an extent whereby I could not continue to handle the two. I had to make a decision whether to continue working to with the church or to go the church way or the ministry way and forget about the work. On those grounds, I thought it was better for me just to do away with the work and do the ministry. Because that's where you know, more the conviction was. Um, in 1998, I decided to resign and go on full-time ministry. I went to my employer, I told them, I can't withstand this. You know, I've decided to resign. And uh, after a big talk, they, they accepted my resignation. And um, I resigned. You know, then I felt God speaking to me to say, whatever you have worked for, I want you to give it out. As long as it came through your sweat, you have to surrender it. I was in Kitwe, in Copper Belt. And the name which I was given was a man who was in Lusaka, the capital city of Zambia. So I called the man. I said, I'm just obeying God. I'm going on full time ministry. But God has spoken to me that whatever is in this house, I should give it to you. Whatever I labored for all these years, I should surrender to you. So the man came. He, did, he resisted. He says, no, I can't. I can't do that. You are going in full, full time ministry. And you go without anything. I'll be very cruel to you. But I told him, I say, if you don't do that, you'll be very cruel to me. Because you don't know what I'm feeling now. You don't know how I'm feeling. These things are not mine, they're yours. You know, so after a long part of discussion, the man accepted. And that's how we gave out everything. Just after giving out everything, God said, I want you to go and do ministry in a rural area, in a village. And God showed me clearly the village that I was supposed to go. I shared with my wife, say, God is saying, we need to go and start ministry in the village. The challenge that was there now was that my wife has never been in the village. So the time that um, uh, we went to the village, I told my wife that where I'm going to go and do ministry, it might be too hard for you. So let me leave you with my sister, who was my immediate elder sister, so that you can stay with her, acclimatize yourself, and uh, eventually when you get used, I'll come and take your well being. So I went to talk to my sister. My wife accepted, and she stayed there. I went somewhere where it was more remote where I started ministry there, ministering. So I used to come and see my, my wife after some time where she was staying with my sister. And uh, until it was about now, two years, you know, when I went to see my wife as usual, and when I reached there, my wife told me to say, no, I'm not going to remain with you now. 
I meant to remain alone. I'm going to follow you where you are going. And uh, she insisted. I said, no, where I'm going is very difficult for you. You might not survive. He says, no, I'm going with you. It doesn't matter where you are staying. Mind you, I, we had given out everything. I was sleeping just on, 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 on grass, you know. So that's how she insisted. And we went into the village. And uh, we did ministry together with my wife there. Um, I remember one of the remarkable things which happened there in the village, which I'll never forget, is when my child was attacked by malaria. The eyes were yellow. There was no, uh, no, 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 no transport there. There was no clinic. And my child started having convulsions. The temperatures were so high. My wife screamed and threw the baby into my hands. I remember that time I lost him myself. I was no longer myself. I got that baby and I started moving up and down praying. The villagers were watching helplessly. I started praying and said, God, my child cannot die. My child cannot die. I speak life upon my child. It took almost one hour. The child was just continuously having convulsions. By the power of God, the child got better at that time. You know, and up to day the child is still living. It's one of the remarkable things. It's one of the things that encourages me in ministry that God is able to, to do anything. God is able to heal. You know, my child was perfectly healed. Another thing that happened, one day we had gone for for a couple's meeting, it was quite very far with my wife, and uh, we did couples there. It was exciting. It was in the village. It was very exciting, and uh, we finished around, you know, uh, 17 hours, and then we started walking back home. I mean, cycling back home, and we started. Um, we we are walking through this path, which was very promising, as we started off. But one surprising thing, as it was getting darker, also the the path was getting narrow and narrow, fading and fading. By the time it was dark, we couldn't know where we were. We couldn't go, you know, the, the, the path just ended there. And we just went through the thicket now, you know. It took us the whole night just walking, you know. All that we knew was a bearing. Somehow we knew this is the way where the village is, where we are staying. So we had to walk, you know, from around that time up to around zero four in the morning. That's when we saw, you know, some fire somewhere. And we went there and we asked the people to help us locate the area where we were. And they helped us. By the time we reached home, it was, it was, it was around six hours, you know. So that was a real experience to us.